so welcome to uh, another running on air video and in this one I'm going to look at the difference between additive and subtractive synthesis. I recently bought a soft synth called Loom 2 which happens to be additive and I wanted to investigate that and do a number of videos about it but before I did that I thought it would make sense to just talk about the principles and the differences between additive and subtractive. I've got two VST plugins, one which is the Cool Poly 6 analog modeling thing, it's quite old, and the other one is Loom 2, which is a software additive synth. Now I suppose it's fair to say that most people that are into synthesizers are familiar with subtractive synthesis. It's the one that everyone learns about first. Additive synthesis has been a lot rarer in terms of its implementation, and there's actually some good reasons for that. Yeah, so to kick things off then, um, we're just going to go for some very simple examples and see how it works in the subtractive world and then move over to the additive world and see if we can do something similar and what the differences are. Okay, so we can see over here the Poly 6, not a real one. I've got it set up at the moment so it's on your standard ramp. No surprises there, I think we're all familiar with that sound. So what is a ramp wave? Well, in electrical terms, it's just a signal which goes up to a peak and then goes back down and then repeats. Even though it's a single waveform being generated from a single oscillator, it can be broken down into many frequencies, which can then be affected by other devices within the synths like the filter and effects and distortion and so forth. So when we sub subtractive synthesis we call it subtractive because if we want to change that sound we need to take something away I mean, you can hear that the ramp wave is quite full it's quite rich it's got a lot of harmonics so if we want to change it then we need to subtract some of that information and that's essentially where the filter comes in. So none of this should be too much of a surprise, but so if I take the cutoff frequency of the filter down, then you get less harmonics. They start to disappear. And if I go over to the scope, we can see that so it starts to look more and more like a sine wave. So how does that work in the additive world? So it just so happens that the default sound in Loom 2 is also a ramp wave. So again, I mean, it looks almost identical really. Um, but the thing that's different here is that there is no waveform being generated. The software is not saying, let's draw this triangular shape and then repeat it. What it's actually doing is saying, right, we need this number of harmonics and we need to add them up in this particular way. And when we do that, we end up with a ramp wave. So there's actually a lot more going on. It's actually having to work a lot harder in order to get to the same place that you would be if you were doing subtractive. Subtractive, let's make a ramp wave. There it is. Additive, no, we're going to have to create this from individual sine waves in order to get to our ramp wave. So the problem that there's always been with additive synthesizers is if you have to do so much work just to get to the point of having a ramp wave, you're just going to run out of any interest in going further and creating new sounds. Yes, you can see the possibilities. If you can individually control every single harmonic, practically anything is possible. But seriously, who's got the time to go and individually program every single harmonic in order to create some kind of sound? So what you need in order to make this a functional system is a number of algorithms which are going to do the work for you. So to give you an example, so let's go for a low pass filter because that's what we were using before. Now within 
this filter module, it's not actually a filter, it's just an algorithm that's going to pretend to be a filter. Now you can hear it's got a little bit of resonance on there, or emphasis as it's called. We can change the slope, so in other words, whether it's a 6 dB per octave, 12 dB, 18 dB per octave filter, but obviously it's not a filter, so it can be anything, really. So, brick wall is another option there. So there's definitely some interesting things that you can do there. I suppose because it's additive, because it's not really a filter, but it's pretending to be a filter, it's doing some quite curious things there that you could quite get from a filter. So with additive synthesis, it's all about blending sine waves together. And you vary the levels from nothing to whatever you need it to be in order to create the sound that you want. And you can also change the frequencies and move them around. Now, let's have a quick look at some of the things that we can do here that wouldn't be so easy in the subtractive world. So, first of all, these... I can just get rid of the fundamental. That's kind of interesting. Um, so that root note is gone. That's one option. I've got this damping. So with, with a ramp wave to, to boost the top frequencies, then you'd need a high pass filter. So essentially you're cutting the lower frequencies, which makes the higher frequencies seem louder. But with additive, you don't need to. You can just say, well, I want my higher frequencies to be louder, and that's it. So with this damping effect, I can do that. And you can see it's getting quite extreme. So for this one, I'm actually going to have to turn the level down so much because it does get so extreme. So there, you can see, and it's still distorting. That's amazing. That's really amazing. I had to turn the level down amazingly to do that. It's What it's done is it's basically flatlined the entire frequency spectrum, which I'm not sure you could do that in subtractive. I, mean, I don't know whether you'd necessarily want to do it that much but I mean that that totally distorted my recorder and I had to do that about five times to stop it from distorting. Now the thing is that's just algorithms in terms of the level of harmonics within a single waveform really. There's nothing too radical in that perhaps but what additive can do then is start to adjust the frequency of all of those harmonics. So just as a little taster, because there's a lot to go through, and I'm planning to do a video which actually talks about this synth specifically. Um, this is called spectral modulation, and it's basically where it changes the frequency of the partials to give you something else. It's quite subtle at first. Now there's quite a lot to this in order to be able to control it. You are shifting the frequencies of the partials or the harmonics around all over the place. But you can change it so that it only affects the ones at the top and you change the amount of modulation as well and a number of other factors. But that just gives you a little taste of how you could start programming in a different way when you have that level of control. Okay, so I think I've covered all the key areas. I'm going to do a couple of videos which are just going to cover what this synth can do. But if you're aware of any other additive synths that are worth looking at, then please let me know. Yeah, so please consider subscribing if you want to know more about Loom 2 and about additive. Until then, uh, thanks very much for watching. Hopefully catch you in a future video. Thanks very much. Bye.